Northwestern Minnesota this coming weekend will not happen because basically Minnesota has, is being overrun by the coronavirus. The, the, the team is, it is now run rampant on that team between the players and the staff. So they can't play this weekend, which means that if there is a Big Ten championship game, Northwestern is in it. Northwestern wins the Big Ten West by virtue of that Minnesota game being canceled. The number of things that would have to happen for that not to take place are almost impossible. Basically, the entire league's average number of games would have to fall below six, which essentially means that we'd be in a place where they can't even play a Big Ten championship game because it means everybody would have to have all their games canceled pretty much the rest of the way. So it's just a shame that that continues here. Obviously, Northwestern's defeat uh, at Michigan State on Saturday was the most impactful college game of the weekend because it was the one team that got knocked out of the playoff race. And I opened the show by telling you it was heartbreaking for me. I drank myself into a stupor Saturday, so much so that it ruined all of Sunday. Um, but what can I say? I love those kids, and, and, and they got outplayed. That day, I mean, Michigan State 100% deserved to win. They played better. So they deserved it. It was tough to watch for Northwestern. However, you know, winning the Big Ten West and making it to the Big Ten championship game and having a chance to play in that game is still an excellent accomplishment for their season. And so I'm hoping that's what they get the chance to do. The question is, is it Ohio State they'll play there? What winds up happening with Ohio State? They have their own coronavirus concerns now in Columbus. And in Columbus, we know they're not really thinking Big Ten championship game. They've already pretty much written that one in. The question is, if they only wind up playing like five games, can they make it to the playoff? Will they put an unbeaten five-win Ohio State into the playoff over a one-loss team from the SEC that played 11 games? It's going to be fascinating to see. I don't have any way of telling you what the answer to that is yet. We'll find out a little more about what they're thinking tomorrow night when we get the next issue of the rankings. Now, Ohio State is sitting there at number four right now, as of last week. They didn't get to play. So will they move down? Will they drop as a result of just having played fewer games than so many of the other teams that are contenders? We'll wait and see. The most significant thing that happened in college football over the weekend, congratulations to her, was Sarah Fuller, who is a star on the Vanderbilt women's soccer team, who got the opportunity because of coronavirus concerns to kick off to actually participate in a men's football game, in, in a Power 5 football game. She's the first woman ever to do so. She kicked off to start the second half. I believe she would have kicked extra points if they had ever had one, um, but they didn't score. They got shut out in the game, and the coach actually got fired the following day. But it's a colossal thing. It's, 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 there's no question. It is just an unabashedly, unquestionably wonderful thing that she got the opportunity to do it and everything that it means and everything it stands for. We're seeing more and more women getting opportunities in men's sports, coaching-wise and other areas, and even playing And uh, when, when there is that opportunity. And anyone who is against that, in my opinion, I, I'm not even interested in talking to you. Now, your, your opinion is not worthy of even being discussed. Good for her. If you have anything to say beyond good for her, I'm not interested in hearing it. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.